So in today's video, I thought I'd take a look at this TF100 time frequency counter. I picked this up for a dollar at a local electronics surplus store. Uh, it caught my eye for a couple of reasons. It's very retro, very old school looking. Looking through the uh, red bezel, I can see that there are seven segment displays inside. When I look at the back, I notice this time set, fast, slow, and hold, and 12 and 24 hour, which to me said, wow, it might, it, you know, it might be able to just function as a clock. Old school digital clock would be interesting. And of course, there's this RF input and RF output that are interesting. So I'll talk you through the troubleshooting process I used to repair it. I have actually repaired it at this point, but I'll take you through the steps I went through, and we'll go from there. So as I always do, before I plug anything in, I go ahead and open it up and take a look inside, just looking for obvious signs of damage. Uh, all kinds of things can happen mechanically inside. I pulled out the four feet with screws on them. In this case, the printed circuit board is actually mounted in the top of the unit, so it's sitting here upside down. And I see pretty standard uh, construction for a device of this era. Looking at the date codes, what I believe to be the main, the main clock chip there, it's 77th or 11th week in 1977. There's another chip down here. Uh, that may actually be the clock chip, I'm not sure. Date code's a bit hard to figure out on that one. This guy looks like it's ninth week in 1977. There's a couple pieces of Jelly Bean TTL logic here. There's a 74S04, which is an octal inverter, shot, shot key inputs, and there's an 82 something here. Again, I suspect it's TTL logic. There's some CMOS logic in here, 4016s. There's a stack of, what is it, five transistors there. Uh, they obviously run warm, you can see on the PC board where it is discolored. There's a whole row of transistors along here. Uh, some resistors that have obviously been warm. warm. Again, the PC board is uh, discolored underneath. My assumption would be that these transistors are the drivers for the seven segment displays. You can see the board in there with the displays plugged into those white connectors. There is a crystal here uh, with a trimmer capacitor sitting next to it. Of course the transformer. If you look down through there, there are, if I can get this to focus, there are four diodes down in, the, down in there that I would assume are the diode bridge for the power supply. There's a 2,200 microfarad uh, 25 volt capacitor, which just looking at this is the uh, filter cap for the power supply. And back on the back of the case here is a most likely linear voltage regulator. It actually is a linear voltage regulator because I've already taken a look. It's a 7805. Couple of comments. As we tear into this, as we look into the back of the unit where the power cord comes in, it's really hard to see down in there, but there's a fuse holder down in there. There's a couple of connectors there with a couple of, of filter caps on it and lots of exposed wiring. There's 120 volts AC in the U.S. exposed on those terminals. You need to be careful around those kind of voltages. It can kill you at a minimum. I make you wish you hadn't touched it if you're in Europe doing this kind of repairs. It'll be 220 coming in, 220 to 240, and it is lethal. Always be careful around any kind of equipment like this where there's exposed metal solder joints and lugs, etc., around a power supply. Just be careful. So, let me step back and talk you through the troubleshooting process I went through. After the visual inspection, I went ahead and took a look at the fuse. There was no fuse in the unit. It was missing. Could be a bad sign. Could be for a million different things. So I elected to put a fuse in and 
and power the thing up and take a look. After powering it up, plugging it in, nothing. It seemed completely stone dead. So I came around and the first thing I did was I looked for voltage across the filter capacitor. So we'll do that next. So at this point I went ahead and connected my voltmeter leads across that main filter cap. We can see up here the capacitor is charging itself back up to about uh, 40 millivolts. It's typical for electrolytics. To you know, self-charge, uh, there's a number of explanations on the web for this. At this point, I went ahead and took the power cord, if I can actually find the plug piece of it, which I have here, and I do what I call a quick tap test. So I've got a power strip back here, and I just take the line cord, and I just quickly poke it in, pull it out. I can see on the meter that there's nothing. So with the unit plugged in, there's no voltage on the filter cap. So after poking around a bit more, I pulled out the fuse I had put into the unit and that fuse was blown. And I didn't actually check the fuse I put in before I put it in to make sure it was a good fuse. It may be the unit blew the fuse, it may just be I had a dead fuse. I don't tend to keep dead fuses outside of my little box of fuses. Found a fuse, threw the ohm meter on it, found a good fuse, and came back to try again. So again, I'm just going to tap, and no sparks. And in this case, I'm seeing 13.7, 13.8, 13.7 volts across that filter capacitor. So at this point, I know that filter capacitor, there's voltage across it, so I have a pretty good hint that the uh, power supply is working. The unit, however, still didn't power up. There was no displays. It just seemed dead again. So suspicions from there moved on to perhaps the voltage regulator. So to troubleshoot the voltage reg regulator, I took these steps. First, let's talk a little bit about the unit. Let me unplug it here while I poke around inside of it. As was discussed a little earlier, these two chips here are, T well, th this one is definitely TTL logic, and I know this one's TTL logic as well. TTL logic is transistor-transistor logic. If you hit Wikipedia or Google, you'll find out all kinds of information. It's 5-volt logic, meaning it requires a 5-volt power supply to operate. Uh, it is jelly bean stuff. There's TTL logic, billions of pieces of it in the world. It's used all over the place. So looking at these two TTL parts, I knew there had to be a 5-volt power supply rail in the unit. Uh, because of the design of power supplies, I had a good idea that the negative lead of that filter capacitor, there to the right, would be the common ground rail inside of the unit. So the next step was to power it up and take a peek at the 5-volt rail. Almost all TTL logic, get you a better view here, has the same kind of pinout. If you look at this TTL device, you'll notice in the lower left hand corner a little dot. It's right above that. That's pin one. In almost all TTL logic, the power supply rails are connected to the lower right hand pin for ground and the upper left hand pin for power. Being a 74C04, I know in this case that pin 14, that upper left hand corner, is the power. And I know that pin 7, that lower right hand corner, is ground. So I can just go in and take a peek at pin 14 to ground and see uh, if I have 5 volts power. To do this, I will go ahead and leave the ground lead to my voltmeter connected to that 2200 microfarad capacitor. And I'll use the uh, positive lead. So here you can see that I've got the positive probe of my voltmeter touching pin 14 on that uh, 74C04IC. I'm holding it in there carefully. I'm keeping my fingers well away of the 120 volt various pins that are down there around the fuse holder. And coming up to the voltmeter, I can see that we don't have 5 volts. We know from looking at the filter cap, we have about 13 volts across the filter cap. And we know this 5 volt rail isn't working. That pretty quickly led me to this 7805 voltage regulator 
back here in the back corner of the unit. Looking at what I suspected was the 7805, it was, and luckily it's in that little socket there, making it very easy to replace. I simply removed the old unit, picked out a good 7805, put a little heat sink compound on it, plugged it into the socket, and screwed it to the back, back panel or the metal back panel. In the case of this design, that metal back panel that it's screwed to is the heat sink. Uh, the 7805 voltage regulator works by taking the approximately 13 volts coming in from that filter cap and regulating it down to 5 volts. What that means is it's taking the 8 volts that it doesn't need, 8 volts plus 5 volts is 13, it's taking that 8 volts and it's dissipating it as heat. So this little guy is going to run pretty warm, uh, thus it requires the heat sink. Heat sink compound always helps dissipate the heat from the active device, in this case the voltage regulator, to the heat sink. Makes a little better thermal connection. So I had replaced that 7805. Spun the unit around, plugged it in, and by golly it worked. Let's take a look at it in operation. With the unit plugged in, the display's lit up. Yay! In this case the displays are upside down because of the mechanical design of this printed circuit boards mounted in the top of the unit. But I can see it counting up seconds. 29 seconds, 30, 31, 32. So it seems to be alive. On the back of the unit, there are some switches for setting the time. So 12 or 24 hour. There is slow increment for setting the minutes. There is fast increment for setting the hours. So it's a very nice, interesting, retro, LED clock. I'll go ahead and put the unit back together and bring it back into service and we'll take a, take a look at it running. So I have the case back on the unit. It's sitting upright. It's been plugged in and we can see that it is counting up seconds here. Let's go ahead and set a time on it. You actually get to the other side. There's the 12 and 24 hour. I'm not sure the exact time at the moment here. I'll set this to, I don't know, 8 a.m. Actually, let's take it up to 1300 ish. So I'm curious about something. Oh, got lucky. So it's set to 1 p.m. in the afternoon. Oh, and so if I depress the 24 hour switch, is it at 12 hours? It's 1. Oh, it didn't maintain the 1300. Interesting. So, it needs to be set 12 or 24 hour mode before the time is set. I've not taken a look at the RF frequency counter section in it. There's this little switch down here that I'm not sure what it does. It seems, to, you know, it says auto time. It doesn't seem to change what the unit's displaying. Interesting. So here's the clock in operation on my bench. For a dollar, I got a great little box. Uh, for the cost of a 7805 and a bit of time to troubleshoot, I have this great retro LED clock. I think it's a great addition here in the lab. And just really enjoy it. The first clock I ever built as a kid was, LED, was an LED clock in about uh, early to mid 70s. Uh, it was very expensive to do at the time. It was a lot of fun to build. I wish I still had that clock, but it's long gone. So I thought I'd take a moment and go through essentially this linear power supply that we just looked at. Talk to you through how I troubleshot it and fixed it. So we have the line cord that plugs into the wall. It's non-polarized. It can go in either direction. There was that fuse that gave me that trouble up front. The missing fuse. The uh, blown fuse I believe I put into it and then a good fuse. This goes off to the primary side of the transformer. This is a step-down transformer, so it produces a lower voltage in the secondary side. We have those four diodes we saw back in the upper left-hand corner of the printed circuit board that had been warm. The board was discolored beneath them. We have the 2200 microfarad filter cap that I pointed out. This is the capacitor that I clipped the leads across just to see if the power supply was alive. And we have that 7805 voltage regulator, regulator that's connected to the uh, sheet metal back of the case to act as a heat sink. 
very standard design for a linear power supply. Uh, in practice, there's most likely a small electrolytic cap sitting here and some kind of a disc cap sitting here. It might be 0.33 microfarad and 0.1. Uh, with older 7805s especially, you needed some additional capacitance to keep them from oscillating. Uh, I have not detailed the design of this out enough to know what they've not done or not done there. It's pretty simple. When I saw the voltage across here, I had a pretty good idea that the diode bridge was okay. I knew the transformer was working. I knew the fuse was okay, and I knew I had power coming in because I was actually getting that about 13 volts here. Uh, a failure mode in this could be that one of the diodes in the bridge has failed, which means I'm getting essentially half-wave rectified AC to the cap rather than full-wave rectified I mean DC, halfway rectified AC. Gosh, let me step back. If one of the diodes in the bridge was faulty, I may have been getting halfway rectified DC to the filter cap rather than full wave rectified DC. That would mean that only half of the power was coming through to the cap. If there was a high current draw, this could mean that the voltage in the capacitor was rolling off every cycle and creating a ripple out here. I have not actually checked the diodes. The unit is working well, so my working assumption is these diodes are working. The filter cap is in sufficiently good condition that it's conditioning the, the power sufficiently to a smooth enough DC that the 7805 regulator can deal with it and get us a nice smooth 5 volt DC out. Seeing that there's been some heat in the unit on the diode bridges and some of the resistors, I do know it gets warm, and I actually know in practice the uh, plastic case on this unit gets pretty warm. It's potential that this filter cap, its electrolytic, is aged. Uh, it may actually be leaking internally, which is creating heat. I haven't actually checked that. At some point here, I'll actually run it with the case open so I can get in there and test the temperature on this cap. Most likely, this cap needs to be replaced. You know, we saw date codes in this thing back to the 70s. That capacitor is 40 years old at this point. I'm sure it's dried up. Uh, I'm sure it's leaky. It's creating heat, which is just causing it to fail faster, and it will eventually fail. So there it is. There's a quick, dirty schematic of the uh, voltage regulator, the steps I took to test it, and I hope maybe this helps somebody learn a bit about linear power supply.